I'm going to preface this by explaining that this story is not mine. I'm just the one who wrote it all down. I'm not Dene, the actual name of the Navajo, and this is how I will refer to them from here on out. I've never lived on a reservation, and know very little about their folklore. I actually was a skeptic in all things paranormal for a really long time until something happened to me a few years ago that made a believer out of me. Nothing to do with skinwalkers or things of that nature, but it definitely made me at least believe in ghosts. I will also be releasing this in parts for easier reading. It's a long one. This story was told to me by my Denis friend Sam, and comes from his own experience. I met Sam on a photography gig a few years after graduating art school and we connected through our shared interest in the paranormal. We would swap stories about our personal paranormal experiences. Well, I only have one experience, so it wasn't really as reciprocal. And what I'm about to tell you is probably the most memorable of his. All names have been changed at Sam's request for privacy and I'm using an alt account. Sam also gave me permission to write this and fully cooperated with me as I put this together. According to him, he's too lazy and I have too much time on my hands, so he was cool with me putting it all together. Sam is full-blooded to me. His mother and father grew up in the nation near Mexico. They had Sam out of wedlock at a very young age and broke up a few years after he was born. His mother moved to Illinois with his now stepfather, who is white and Catholic. Sam grew up in a Chicago suburb and lived there most of his childhood and teenage years. He would visit his dad for a couple of weeks a few times a year, but never really spent a prolonged amount of time out in the reservation. At 20, Sam moved in with his dad on the res to get a better understanding of my heritage, as he said it, and stayed there till he was about 24. He was very interested in his Denis heritage, especially when he started developing his art practice as a painter and photographer. As he spent more and more time on the res, he grew a deep interest in Denis superstition guess as a way to connect to his culture that he felt he didn't do enough to be part of in his childhood and teenage years. Since he essentially assimilated into Midwestern suburban white culture due to his mother and stepdad. While on the res he made friends with and eventually dated a girl whom we'll call Jess, who had fully grown up on the res. She was a little older than Sam and got her teaching degree in another state before coming back to the res to teach high school. She was basically agnostic, more on that in a bit, but had a very superstitious family. In fact, her great uncle, whom we'll call John, was a medicine man. I'm not super familiar with the details surrounding this practice and Sam didn't go into a ton of detail in regards to this either, but basically he was a very respected elder and was extremely superstitious. He often spoke of Denis folklore, creatures, magic, etc. and took it all very seriously. John was pretty old and often needed help around his property, so Sam was often over there helping him out with odd jobs. Sam felt weird taking money from the old man, especially since Sam already had a part-time job as an art teacher and sold his paintings and photos in Santa Fe art markets for pretty good money. So as payment, Sam would ask John to share some of his knowledge with him. It was Sam's way of connecting to his heritage, he told me. They'd talk for an hour or two every night that Sam came over to help. Sam would basically grill him on every random Denis related thing under the sun and would, generally, get a earful about it. Except when it came to one specific topic. E. Nautlushi. Sam, having spent most of his childhood with his mom and stepped out off the res, didn't have the same outlook on skinwalkers that the Denis did. The whole don't speak of them thing wasn't something he subscribed to, mainly because A. Sam grew up in the Chicago area where no skinwalkers would be around anyway, and B, he was raised Catholic and didn't believe in Denis superstitions. He was pretty interested in this part of Denis law because of how common skinwalkers were in creepypasta on boards like X, and of course, Reddit. So naturally his interest in them disturbed John and he generally shut down any discussion of them. When he brought this up to Jess, she got visibly upset and asked him to never speak of them to her or her great uncle ever again. This was weird to Sam since Jess wasn't superstitious or even religious for that matter. He thought his agnostic girlfriend wouldn't be so weird about these things. She explained to Sam that, despite her general agnosticism, that was one thing she knew was real. Because she 
and other members of her family had had experiences. She told him a very similar story to the types you'll see posted online. Late at night on the res, driving home and seeing what you think is a coyote or a sheep following you at alarming speed, only to, upon closer inspection, see what appears to be human underneath animal skin, or a half man, half coyote kind of creature. This happened to Jez when she was a little girl, being driven home by her father. Great uncle John came and performed some sort of protection slash cleansing ritual that they thought protected them at least for a few years. It wasn't until Jess moved back after getting her degree that she encountered one again, this time running along the rooftops of some homes and buildings in town. She thought somehow that someone's dog got up on their roof, but it would then get on two legs and jump to the next building. After landing, it would perch up there, sitting cross-legged, staring her down with yellow eyes. She sped home so fast she got pulled over by tribal police. When she explained what she saw and why she was speeding, the officer shushed her, tore up the ticket he was writing, and told her to get her ass home. Uncle John came by again and performed a ritual. Jess said that, according to John, the creature wasn't after her and was caught in the act of stalking someone else. That made it set its eyes upon her, so she was to be extra cautious and her words, shut the fuck up about them forever. She only told Sam all of this to keep the things off her and her family. But wouldn't you know it, that just made him more interested. And who could blame him really? It seems as though Sam kind of whittled down John's resolve on the issue because eventually, the old man budged a little bit. He revealed to Sam a few bits and pieces of information over the years. I'm just gonna copy and paste from some DMs he sent me while I was putting this whole story together. Note that the only changes I have made to his messages were the names of those involved. Also, in case it isn't obvious, Sam abbreviates Skinwalker to SW. The first thing John told me about Skinwalkers was that they can't actually read minds like they say in the stories and stuff. It was basically what you'd call an old wives tale because they didn't want their kids talking about that shit and spreading the idea that this was something people could do. I think they wanted the practice of being a skinwalker to die out completely, so they thought by forbidding people from talking about it, nobody would be curious enough to try out black magic and shit. I think because Denis are so steeped in oral traditions that they basically believed if enough people stop talking about a thing, it dies forever, but you know you can't tell people not to talk about something. So they said that if you talk about skinwalkers, it will make them more interested in you and seek you out. It was just them trying to scare kids. The other thing is that they are just regular people, not monsters. They don't have any special powers, just know a lot about certain things that a lot of us don't. Like how there are things you know how to do as a video guy. Office note, I'm a videographer by trade, that regular people who've never done it don't. Like when you show them a really cool edit you did or shots you pulled off and they're like, whoa, how, how did, did you, you do, do that? that? Do what? Same kind of stuff. They just spend a lot of time learning about stuff that makes them able to do what they do. They studied animals and how they move, making suits, studied poisons, hallucinogens, shit like that. They're medicine men, just like John. In fact, a lot of them are openly good medicine men in the community and nobody knows they practice this stuff. It's just another form of their medicine men stuff, but they use it for people who want to harm or scare others. Like, they get hired to fuck with people. John told me this one story about a close friend who was also a medicine man in the Tuber City area that had an arsehole in the neighborhood who kept bitching about his property lines or something like that. He was building a fence and there was a big fuss about it. The guy harassed the shit out of his next door neighbor because of it, but the neighbor knew where his land started and ended so didn't budge. Eventually some weird shit started to go down. The arsehole's neighbor was talking about how there was a gigantic coyote in his backyard that would look in the windows at night and scare the shit out of him and his girlfriend. He would hang in his backyard with a shotgun around sundown, which of course weirded out everyone in the neighborhood, and a lot of folks were saying that he was mentally unstable. But then people in the neighborhood started hearing fucked up noises, and someone saw the coyote stand on its hind legs and look in the windows. Then, one day, the guy's girlfriend drove him to the emergency room because he was having a really bad trip, apparently. Like, 
hallucinating and talking about this coyote man who was threatening to kill him. John doesn't know what he was on, if it was like peyote or something. He came down a few hours later and a lot of people in town laughed it off but John's friend and a few other people in the neighbourhood, like I assume the ones who actually saw the coyote man, knew it was probably a skinwalker fucking with him. John said that skinwalkers know a lot about hallucinogens, how to get the results they want from them and how to administer them to their victims without them knowing. Like, they know so much about the compounds and shit that they know exactly how it will affect you and how to fuck with you when you're on them. So John's friend came by to bless the place and perform a ritual and the weird shit stopped. Because skinwalkers are medicine men themselves, they also believe in the power of rituals that are used against them. That's how I would say these things work. Nothing super magical or paranormal about it. They just have strong beliefs and know not to fuck with certain shit. Anywho, so he thinks that the asshole neighbor sicked a skinwalker on him to get him to move out of town or something like that. The last thing John told me for a really long time was about how skinwalkers were actually good guys at one time. They created that whole practice to fuck with the colonizers. They protected Denis and scared away white people trying to take land and assault people and stuff. But some started using the practice for their own gain and once the treaties were signed and we got land back and all that they just started exclusively using it to do bad stuff to other Denis. After this John basically put a kibosh on skinwalker talk. Sam told me he thought it was weird that John didn't want to talk about them. After all, John said it himself that skinwalkers can't read minds and talking about them didn't draw their attention to you. As Sam said, it's an old wives tale. He even told this to Jess but she shot him down. She actually kind of insulted him apparently telling Sam he's not culturally a Denis so he wouldn't understand and him trying to get this deep into skinwalker stuff was offensive to their heritage. Basically, he was culturally a white boy and should shut the fuck up. Now, I know some reactionary types on the internet would probably take offense to this, but it's not unfounded. How would you like it if some cultural outsider came into your town and started grilling you about your long-held beliefs while directly contradicting them?